Guys, this is Farm with Pro Box Respect TKO. I'm in London with a former two-time world champion and one of my favourite boxing pundits, Paulie Malinaji. Paulie, how are you doing, bruv? You all right? Good, mate. Good, how are you? Good, good, yeah. Um, welcome to London. I know it's not your first time. Uh, when did you get into town, mate? Uh, it's been about a week. Yeah, cool. We're here at the Ultimate Boxer press conference. Um, tell us a bit about it, buddy. How did you get involved in stuff? Uh, well, I got involved in my friend Ben Shalom approached me with a novel idea about you know doing something like this. And uh, you know, a lot of people come up to me with a lot of ideas all, all the time. Some of them good, some of them bad. But the problem I find with a lot of the ideas is they don't have a mechanism or a method to the madness of how to actually achieve the goal with the set with that they have in mind. You know, the, the idea may be cool, but there has to be a goal. There has to be a an end result. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's not really a lot of a great amount of business planning behind a lot of people's ideas um, when they come up to me about them. Uh, I liked how Ben had a good idea, so obviously that got me listening. And then uh, through his connections, uh, he had a lot of connections on um, his ideas as far as the way he intended to do things and uh, the way he expected to get results. Um, started to really gain my curiosity more and more. You know, obviously he's an intelligent guy. Yeah. He knows how to achieve what he's looking for in this. And so, you know, we, so little by little, I, I got myself involved with him. Um, he knows how to tap into the younger generation as well, which is, I think, something that's missing in boxing. is the key youth generation, you know, the internet generation. The, the social the, media, yeah. Social absolutely. media generation. And, you know, I, I like that he knows how to tap into it. More importantly, I like that he's young, so he can, can tap into it in, 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 in that regard. No matter how cool I think I am, at the end of the day, I'm almost, I'm almost 40 years old. I can't tap into that generation. Looking good, chap. I don't have a lot. I don't have a lot in common with them. So, so uh, I think he was more a guy. If we're going to tap into this kind of thing, you need somebody who knows how to think like that generation, but is smart enough to deal with an advanced generation as well. You know, so I really like the combination of, of things that he brought to the table and. Uh, and obviously, I like the idea, and I like boxing, and I like to be able to help yep. boxing, and I like to be able to help boxers. And I think this put all that together, and I, I got involved. Paulie, um, talking about Ben, great guy, great concept here. Um, now, in terms of the in terms of the platform we have here, you know, we've had say similar in the UK, like Price Fighter. Why do you think this is going to be different and possibly successful, which we're all hoping for? Well, Price Fighter had a little run in it when it went well, and I think uh, there's a pre there's a place for that kind of audience. I just think that eventually you have to move with the technology times. You know, Price Fighter was good for TV. Uh, Sky had it on Sky. Definitely. But I think the the way you branch out to new audiences, and I think Price Fighter is something that a new audience can grasp. You know, with new to boxing at that time, it's gonna alter boxing will be new to boxing again. You know, I think you grasp. You started with the you. You know, you're gonna have your core audience of boxing fans. They're very. They're very traditional, you know, and you don't want to lose those people. So you involve people like myself, like Ricky Hatton, like Anthony Crawler, because, you know, you want to legitimize your brand as traditional as well, the traditional boxing fans. But at the same time, in order to reach a new audience, uh, yeah. this is something new. So the, the, the core audience will look at it as skeptical. You have me, Anthony, and, and Ricky for that reason, but the new audience... In order to market to them, to brand to them, you need to use the newest technology because that's what they're up with. That's what they're new with. Think about Price Fighter started ten years ago, right? I mean, yeah. Ten years ago, you know, the, the younger core audience ten years ago were just kids. Now, you know, yeah. now they're teenagers and young adults. You know, so right away that generation changes. You know, so. And after a few seasons, I think faded out as well. Yeah, exactly. The concept. So, that, so the, you, I think it's it, it's a concept that works, but I think with Ultimate Boxer. We're using uh, a little bit different. You know, anytime you come with an idea, you take a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and you try to brand it, and it works. In 2018, I think the way to go is to market through the internet. I think the way to go is to market through the Unilateral you know, Live, and through our connections that we have with that. I think at the end of the day, you all, we're also not tying any fighters up with any promotional entities. We're not tied up with any promotional entities. A fighter can be tied to a promotional entity and still be involved in Ultimate Boxer and not. Uh, this, and not to respect his contract, he'll still belong to that said promoter. A fighter can be a free agent and be involved in Ultimate Boxing right. and obviously get himself noticed and then, then sign with another promoter. We do not sign the fighters, we're just loyal to the brand. We're trying to make the best fights possible, but these fighters are given opportunities that they may not otherwise have had. So we're loyal to the sport and we're loyal to the opportunity that we're giving to these kids, you know, to these young guys. So opportunity without the red tape. Actually. Opportunity without the red tape. And, um, you know, the red, the red tape is pretty self-explanatory. Sure. You fight well, put up good fights. Our brand, uh, our brand will grow, which is what we want. And of course, you know your brand will grow because that's what you want. And maybe you'll wind up with a contract with a big promoter or something. Who knows? You know, it's kind of it's kind of a one hand washing the other. There's no red tape.
Yeah. You know, uh, but using the social media platform, uh, trying to brand it around a, a youth-based uh, group of people, uh, core audience, um, without losing your original fan base. And we're going to have entertainment. We're going to have music. You know, that's going to try to, you know, make it young and hip. We we want to. We, we want to keep that old audience, but we don't want to lose the, the, the audience we can grab now. I think that's, that's an audience that's been ignored by boxing for too long. And in the end of the day, technology's moving. Sure. At one time, radio didn't exist. It was just live gates, and it was big live gates. Live gates were still around, though, when radio started coming around, yeah. and radio started became, became a big hit. Then you had television, it became a big hit. So boxing has always found a way to move with the technological times and be involved with that. So. I think you have to continue to do that, otherwise you get left behind and you're going to lag behind. And that's what Ultimate Boxer does. I think it's up to the newcomers to try to start something new because the old timers, they're already successful at what they right. do. They don't have any reason to risk. The, new, the newcomers will have the reason to risk. And, and the old timers can kind of sit back and see what works and what doesn't for the newcomers. And if something works, maybe you'll start something that other people will try as well. As you say, once upon a time, we didn't even have the internet, which is huge now, you know, not just social media, but online. Um, one of the other things, you mentioned the two champions, Anthony Crowlo, Ricky Hatton, but you also actually have the backing of the British Board of Boxing Control as well, right, in this in this platform? Yeah, of course, which is obviously important, because you can't have a fight without them. Uh, That's right. Obviously back here. So, you know, it's, uh, it's I, th I think we've grown it, we've gotten to this point today, people see there's a big announcement in this press conference, but we've grown to this steady and slowly but surely, you know, uh, so that we've had the right thing to kind of broadcast out to the fans, to the people, and so they can be excited about it when we finally, when we finally do put up the show, and I think April 28th will be a fun night, because it'll be a fun night, because we're going to have good fights, all the fighters are undefeated that are involved, they're going to fight very hungrily, because you know, they're going to fight in a hungry manner, because, you know, they, they realize they have a chance to really give, really give their careers a push on so many levels, and of course they're getting paid a little bit more money than they have to this point in their career, and... You know, maybe even the other promoters will take note and say, hey, maybe they'll find the talent they want to sign to their tables, you know, because the talents that will be broadcast on Ultimate Boxer won't, 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 won't have any ties to us. You yeah. know, maybe they're tied to another promoter currently, I don't know. But uh, they definitely won't be tied to us. And if there's any free agents in the in the pot of, of fighters and they impress a, a promoter, he's, he obviously can go there and sign them. There's no red tape. Paulie, the next show is less than three months away. Will you be back for that? And what capacity would you be involved uh, the, in? The plan is to be, to be back for that, yes. The, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm one of the proud ambassadors of the Ultimate Boxer. Uh, I'll, I'll we'll continue to uh, see how I, I, I continue to involve myself. And uh, we'll see maybe uh, in some of the broadcasting. Uh, obviously, I have broadcasting commentator skills. Yeah. Uh, maybe involved with that a little bit or, or just uh, be a face. We'll see. I think, I think that, that will still have to evolve, you know. And then we'll see how it goes. But obviously, to grow the brand is the key. Paulie, as I mentioned before, you're one of my fav favourite boxing commentators, pundits. Uh, yeah. Love it. I think you're always on the ball. Um, now, in terms of your own career, are you happy as a commentator? Yeah. I remember uh, around the uh, going back to the Mayweather McGregor fight, there was a little bit of beef there. Or can you see yourself coming back in the ring, or are you happy as a commentator? No, I'm pretty happy as a commentator. You know, I never say never, but I, I don't particularly enjoy training. So, sure. You know. <laughs> Nobody McGregor, does. Of course, I'm McGregor. I can win the fight without really training anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, but and hopefully, make loads of money as well, bro. I don't, I don't really, uh, I don't really fancy myself going through training camps. You know, it's very, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, it's, it, those days have kind of gone by me. You know, so I kind of enjoy what I do now. I keep very busy now anyway, so it's hard to find time to train. So, so I think I'm good where I'm at now. Are you excited for any of the uh, forthcoming fights, big fights at all this yeah, year? Yeah, the schedule looks pretty strong in the first half of the year, so I'm excited about a lot of the fights actually. Yeah, excellent. I was just going to say uh, before we wrap up, um, I know there was a lot of uh, uh, different opinions, but the way you called the first fight, Andre Ward versus Sergei Kovalev, was on the money for me, spot on. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, and, and for that, you know, the, the, even the second fight. I mean, did you see it going the same way it did? Um, you know, the second fight, I thought uh, Tony Lee's a little hard on um, Kovalev. You know, I, I, I really would have liked to see the fight evolve on its own. Instead yeah. Of, instead of the referee, instead of the referee causing the fight to evolve in a certain way. You know? Okay. I think if the referee would have uh, done it right uh, in the rematch, you would have had a great fight, um, and the fight evolves, you know, in a way that it's going to be different from the way it ended up evolving. You know, I think the end... Kovalev was hurt and Kovalev was breaking, but a lot of that also had to do with the low blows. You know, sure. I think uh, if you warn Andre Ward for some low blows, it's possible that he doesn't throw to the body as often. 
it's possible that you know the fight is going to start to you know evolve in a different way. It may still be advantageous to Andre Ward. I'm not telling you Andre Ward may not win the fight. I'm just telling you the give and take and the choice of exchange and, and where the fight winds up is going to be completely different. You may still have the same winner, but I think you would have had a better fight. Um, so that was a little bit disappointing. Paulie, as I mentioned to you off camera, just got back from a nice trip in Vegas where it was a lot warmer than here. Um, just a couple of fights that I'm interested in is obviously you've got now Badu Jack versus uh, Donnie Stevenson happening, um, and also you've got potentially Lenaris versus Lomachenko or even Marky Garcia. Um, yeah. How do you see those fights going, bud? All fun fights. You know, uh, Adonis has been a long reigning champion. Uh, I think Badu is the toughest fight he's going to have in a long time. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he deals with that. But of course, uh, the power of a, light, of, a, of a puncher at light heavyweight yeah. is something that Badu also has to, you know, has never tasted. So, so it'll be interesting to see. Uh, that's a fun fight. And of course, Lenaris, Lomachenko, Mike Garcia. You make some match those any way you want. You got a good fight. Yeah. Well, I, I was under the understanding that straight after the fight last week or so, Lenaris was going to move to 140 pounds. Um, and fight for one of the uh, Terence Crawford titles, but it looks like uh, it's Lomachenko next. Yeah. Um, you know. Either way, it's entertainment, so yeah. it's fun to watch. Um, before we leave, um, can you, just for the viewers, can you let them know how they can get a hold of Ultimate Boxer as well on uh, social media? Oh, uh, well, social media, actually. Read them out, chat. I think, yeah. Or, um, let me check on my Twitter right now, I'm sure. One of the things, obviously, today's press conference was on um, was on Facebook. It was on Facebook. People were able, would have been able to follow it. But the uh, Ultimate Boxer Twitter is just Ultimate Boxer and it's with two X's. Okay. So try, follow us there for all the updates. So that's where it really, obviously, the pictures and whatnot and, and Instagram and whatnot is good too. It's probably Ultimate Boxer as well on Instagram. But get a lot of updates on Twitter and then uh, obviously on our, on, our, on our website, which is, uh, I don't have the website here. Chairman, thanks for your time today. It's been a real privilege and a safe journey home as well. Okay, Take care, buddy.